My name is Andrea Vinay, and I'm going to be talking about one-handed triangle rolls. In order to do this technique, we'll be using the closed corner of the triangle, which should be facing the hand that is holding the beater. And I'll demonstrate that right now. When we're playing triangle rolls, we should strive for a sustained, consistent sound with as many overtones as possible. And in general, with triangle playing, we want to achieve as many overtones in any context, whether we're playing rolls or we're playing single notes. And that's because the triangle's purpose is to function as a non-pitched metallic instrument. And if the notes that we are rendering from the instrument are very strong and clear in pitch, then we run the risk of competing with other instruments that are playing in a high register in your ensemble. So to achieve that 45 degree angle, because triangle is a game of angles and 45 degrees is your magic number, we want to set up our, pos our posture and our stance in our arms in order to allow my wrist to play the right type of motion for the stroke and to come in contact with the triangle at that 45 degree angle. So I want you to imagine that you are ballroom dancing like in a Disney movie. The hand holding the triangle is going to sit higher up where you'll see the conductor, similar to where we'd hold a tambourine, and then the hand with the beater will be lower. Now I want you to take the hand with the beater and turn it over so it's flat facing the floor, uh, parallel to the floor, and then I want you to air drum um, a motion like you're playing snare drum. So we're hinging at the wrist and notice how the beater has a straight up and down path. Now this is a natural motion for the wrist that we want, but now I want you to turn your hand over so that the thumbnail is facing the opposite eye and the palm of my hand and my thumb are at a 45 degree angle to the floor. And then also mimic that motion. So my wrist is still able to move naturally and hinge the way it's supposed to, but I can come in contact with the corner of the triangle at a 45 degree angle. And this allows me to strike the top and the bottom bars of the triangle. It's like, it's like I'm getting two for one in my strokes because I come in contact um, at the top and the bottom. And so this allows my wrist to move naturally and for me to have as much contact on the triangle as possible. Now this motion is very similar to beating eggs. So if you really like omelets, you're really good at making scrambled eggs, this will probably be very natural to you. Now this is supposed to if I were to hold my arm and my beater parallel to the floor where I don't have that 45 degree angle, notice my wrist is moving up and down so it's hard to contact both of those adjacent sides. And in addition, because I'm not striking the triangle at a 45 degree angle, it's coming at it flat, I'm getting a lot of pitch and so then we're not achieving the overtones that we're looking for. It also makes me use my arm to play triangle because my wrist is not in the right position and that gets kind of clunky and it's not very efficient in the motion. One benefit of playing uh, one-handed rolls in the corner of the triangle is that it is very easy to play quiet, soft rolls in addition to loud rolls and then to crescendo and decrescendo between the two. When I want to play quietly, I'll just move to the uh, very tip of the beater and play very close in the corner. And then the louder I want to play, I'll just move in towards the center of the triangle. This just gives me a little bit more runway to get more velocity to play louder. Now, I implore you to avoid playing the dinner bell triangle roll, which I'm sure we've all seen. This is not ideal for a few reasons. First, it's clunky, it's inefficient, and it's very easy for the mallet to get tongue-tied inside the triangle because you're trying to cover a lot of ground and you're trying to strike all three sides as opposed to just two. Uh, second, it is almost impossible to play quietly because I have to move at a rate fast enough to create a sustain. It's hard to control that and keep everything really quiet. And um, lastly, because of the angle I have to hold my beater at in order to strike all the inside corners, I am not playing at a 45 degree angle and so I'm getting a lot of pitch to the sound. So I encourage you to avoid the dinner bell approach and aim for the closed corner and um, you'll be really good at scrambling eggs. <laughs> Thanks.